some events out there. So let's give him a round of applause. Let's bring him up here right now with your warm <laughs> welcoming. Come on up, Rico. All right. Mic on? Mic's okay? Mic's okay? Is it on? Is it on? Can you hear me? Testing? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, really cool. Oh, okay. First of all, I want to say it's really been a, an amazing a seminar, hasn't it? It's been so much fun, so much good information. Yeah, I've gone to a lot of seminars, and I can tell you it's one of the best ones I've ever been to. So thank you so much, Paul. It's been great. It's, it's been really been great. And thank you for having me, too. Okay, I've got a question for you. Raise your hand. If you'd like to live to be 125. Not everybody, only a few, right? Only a few raise their hand. Well, there's one group of people when I ask this question to, every single one of them raises their hand. Who do you think that would be? You almost, yeah, people who are 124. <laughs> because that's a show, that just shows us that if you could, everybody wants to live as long as they possibly can, right? Okay. Well, listen to this. Science now tells us that our genetic potential is to stay healthy to 125. Our lifespan should be 125, but yet we know our life expectancy is only about 80. So that means most people are missing out on about 20 to 45 years of good living. So our life expectancy is only about 80. Well, it's, well, it's 80 for women and about maybe six, 76, 77 for men. So who knows why women live a little bit longer than Men. <laughs> I think it's because women are just smarter than we are, you guys. They don't do as much stupid stuff and beat themselves up as much as we do. I think, I think that's what it is, you know. Okay, so when I found that out, that most people are missing out on a lot of good years of, li of living, that's why I developed what I call the ageless living lifestyle. And the ageless living lifestyle is really about how to create what I call real wellness. And real wellness means to have a high degree of mental, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual well-being. And what that means really is it's just that you feel good about every aspect of your life. And that's really the foundation for creating a highly successful and happy life. Isn't that, the, isn't that most people's bottom line? You want to be highly successful and, and you want to be, live a happy life. But we also know that uh, in order, it takes a lot of energy to be highly successful, doesn't it? It takes a lot of energy, okay? And also, it, it takes a, an abundance of good health if you are going to be able to really enjoy a long, happy life. It, it, would, you, would you agree with that? Okay, guys, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions during this presentation. So if you'd like to have the right answer, I make it very easy for you. It's always going to be yes. yes. Can you say yes? Yes. yes. And does it make you feel good? Yes. When you say yes, it's a high-energy word. It makes you feel really good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay, really good. <laughs> okay, so, so the Ageless Living Lifestyle is going to help you to create that real wellness in your life because that's the foundation for being able to create that successful, happy life. Does that make sense? Yes. It's the foundation. Yes. Okay, really good. Now, before I tell you more, about, would you like to learn how, more about the Ageless Living Lifestyle and how you can develop your own personal Ageless Living Lifestyle strategy? Yes. 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 Okay, good. But before I do that, I got something I really got to show you guys. This is so much fun. Everybody loves this. It's called my all-day energy uh, routine. Okay. So if there was four things that you could do four times a day, and it only took you four minutes to do it, and it would greatly increase your mental and physical energy, it would uh, it would keep you focused and clear in your mind. It would actually uh, reduce your back pain and back stiffness. It would help you to reduce eye strain. And best of all, it would give you a little attitude adjustment. I think we could all use that once in a while, right? OK, so it's four things, four times a day, only takes four minutes to do it. Would you like to learn how to do that? Yes. Yes, OK, but now, I think you all realize, you all know that knowledge without action is useless, right? So I want you to commit to actually, when you learn this, to actually do it, OK? OK, good. So do not raise your hand if you're committed to doing this. I got you. Nobody raised their hand, right? I just thought about this recently. Isn't that a good idea? Because it's, sometimes it's hard to get people to raise their hand, right? And some people, no matter what you ask them, they won't raise their hand, right? So nobody raised their hand, so you're all committed, right? Okay, come on, stand up. 
and go to the back of your chair. You've got to spread out just a little bit and go to the back of your chair. Okay? So the very first component, and this is the most important thing that you can do to really improve your overall wellness, is to breathe, to get more oxygen to your body. Normally, as we're just standing here, here's your lungs, they're going like this. And what we really need to do is be filling up your whole lungs full of oxygen, right? It's the very best tool we have is to breathe more, okay? So you all know how to do deep, abdominal deep breathing. You relax your stomach muscles, you breathe in and let your muscles just expand out. And then when you blow it out, as you come back down, as you're blowing out through your mouth, you pull your abdominal muscles in and blow all that still air out. It's pretty simple. You all know how to do that, right? Okay, so we're going to combine deep abdominal breathing with a basic forward bend and a backward bend. So that's, that's really going to increase the flexibility of your spine. Uh, what's a term that we use for uh, when it's a dead body that's laying on a slab in a morgue? Anybody know? A stiff. a stiff, yes, that's a stiff. So the stiffer your spine becomes, the sooner you're going to be laying on that slab. Not a good idea. So you want to keep your spine flexible, right? Okay, so I'll show you how to do it first, and then we'll all do it together, right? Hope I don't go out of the video, but I've got to hold on here. So you've got to hold on to the back of your chair. And what you want to do, you want to keep your legs straight, your back straight. And what you do is you tuck your pelvis under, so, you, so you're going to bend forward like this, so your legs are straight and your arms are straight. And so here, when you're, bend, when you're doing a forward bend, you're stretching all the back side of your body. And at the same time, you're going to be exhaling because you're compressing your lungs. So you blow out. Now when you come up, you tuck your pelvis under, forward, and keep your arms straight and do a little back bend, and now you're stretching all the front side of your body, and you're breathing in, nice big breath. And then blow it out slowly. Pull in your abdominal muscles, get it all the way out, and stretch it all the way back. Doesn't that feel good? Push your hips back. You can do one more for me. Take a nice big breath, do a nice back bend, stretching all the front of your body. Doesn't that feel good? So you should do at least about 10 of those. This is a good way to start your day off. So I tell my clients, if you don't do any other flexibility exercises, at least do this. You can do this, can't you? You can do this off your kitchen counter, out on your deck on a railing. So do that about 10 times. So that, that only takes about, about a minute and a half. Okay, the next one, Allison already talked about this really well. You've got to stay hydrated. Our bodies are 70% water. Our brains are almost 90% water. Keep some water on your desk and drink a glass of water every hour. We're not... No plastic water bottles, you guys. Those things are really polluting our planet, right? So you've got to have either a stainless steel or a polycarbonate. So drink water. That's real simple. That only takes about 30 seconds. Here's the one you guys are going to really have fun with. This is, everybody really likes this. It's called tapping. And tapping, we're going to tap on our body, and all that's doing really is moving blocked energy in our body, okay? Okay, we're going to start on top of our head. So start on top of your head. Tap pretty good. Really going to tap. Feels kind of good, doesn't it? Then come down to our forehead. These are actually our stress points, so this is a good thing, too, if you feel stress. Just tap here on your stress points, right above your eyebrows. Tap, tap, and then go to the bridge of your nose. Tap a few times. Let's go out to our temples. Let's go right beneath, uh, beneath our, the little bones there beneath your eyes. Tap. Feeling good. Right below your nose. Right below your mouth. And I like to do it on my jaws. You know, we tend to hold tension in our jaws, right? Get the tension out of your jaws. And now right below your collarbone, feel a little notch right there, then just kind of slide over a couple points. These are our kidney points. Tap real good. Oh, tap it on my mic. <laughs> you hear that? OK, good. And then hold your arm out like this. We're going to start right underneath our armpit and tap. Then we're going to go up on the other side of our arm. Tap pretty hard all the way off the top side. Keep tapping really good. Bend your neck over a little bit up on the side of your neck. Good. Okay, other side. Here we go. All the way up. Tap pretty good. Get a good tap going. Let me hear you. Yeah, that's better. All the way up on the side of your neck. Feels good. Okay, good. Now here's the fun part. You've got to bend over. Go to the side like this. Bend over a little bit. We start right here. But these are your kidneys, so don't tap too hard on your kidneys. Just a little bit here on your lower back. Kind of tap a little bit. But now, when you get down to here, nobody can go really hard. Come on. Give yourself a good little workout there. All right, and then down the back side of your legs. Come all the way down real hard here. Good. Now up the front side of your legs. Tap really good. Come on up. Okay, come back to center. And now right to the center of gravity of your body. We call this the heart in martial arts. Tap real good. 
Okay, stand up nice and tall now. Pull your shoulders back, take a big breath. Whew. How do you feel? Feel that buzz? Feel that energy flowing in your body? Is that good? Can you guys do that? Yes. All right, you can do that. Okay, now the last one, one this is my favorite. Actually, you can go ahead and sit down now. This is actually my favorite one. This is called cupping. It's going to give your eyes some, reju uh, some rejuvenation. Okay, so you, you put your hands together and rub them real so I get a lot of heat going. And then close your eyes and cup your hands over your eyes. Okay, and just quiet your mind and let your eyes relax for a minute. You know, we all look at computers too long. So go ahead and cup your eyes, close your eyes, put, put hands over your eyes. Now while we're doing this, I want you to put your attention on gratitude. Think of something that you're really grateful for in your life. And when you're in, in a state of gratitude, what that does is what it, it really elevates your mood, right? Because you're feeling really good about something that's really good, that you're really, uh, you're really happy about in your life. So it's going to really elevate your mood. So think, each time you can think of something different when you do it four times. Okay, now for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to shift your... Look, look, keep your hands over your eyes. Keep, keep giving your eyes rejuvenation. Now the next 30 seconds, I want you to think about something that you still want to accomplish in your life. You know, something that, that you really want to happen. And get the feeling that it's almost coming. It's almost there. It's, it's, so it gets you really excited, doesn't it? It's almost going to happen. Something that you're really excited about. Something you really want to, want, to, want to happen in your life. So when you do this, you've elevated your mood, and now you're excited. All right, good. Can you do that? You can do that, can't you? All right, was that good? Was that helpful for you guys? Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, too, I'll tell you what I can do for you guys is that if you go out and sign my, my sheet and give me your email address out on my table, I actually have a sheet like this. It shows all four of those, illustrates all four of the four things you need to do. So I'll send you a link, and you can just print it out, and you put it on your desk so it reminds you how to do that. Would that be good? Okay, good. Okay, good. And can I give you a really good energy tip? Another energy tip? Okay. Most people work in an office these days, right? We sit at the computer, and so we're really busy, but we're, our brain uses a lot of blood sugar and a lot of energy throughout the day. But the lactic acid builds up. So at the end of the day, you feel kind of tired, right? You feel kind of fatigued, right? But you're not really tired. I mean, unless you're a construction worker, your muscles aren't tired, right? But you go home, I'm tired, I feel tired. So it's a big excuse. All you have to do is go out and breathe. Do some aerobic activity. Go for a walk. Go for a swim. Ride your bike. Do something, and you'll just revive yourself and then you'll be able to have a lot of energy and enjoy your evening. How simple is that? You can do that, can't you? Yep. Okay, great. Now, before I tell you more about the Ageless Living Lifestyle, I should tell you a little bit about my story and how I developed the Ageless Living Lifestyle. Uh, for the past 31 years, I've had the good fortune to be a health and fitness trainer. And in that time, I've been able to uh, work with hundreds of individuals of all ages, all different fitness levels and different a lot of different health challenges to greatly improve their overall health and well-being. And in that time, I, I was able to discover how mental and physical neglect, what it does to the human body, how it accelerates aging. But also in that time, I've been able to discover and develop strategies that can not only reverse a lot of that premature aging, but it can prevent it as well. And as Joseph said, I've also been able to write 15 books on health and wellness. And, I, and about 15 years ago, when I found out about that, that our lifespan should be 125, so I set out to, I didn't want to miss out on those good years of living, so I decided I'd better research and see what's going on. So of course what I found out was it's lifestyle, it's unhealthy lifestyle, right? Even the conservative AMA, the American Medical Association, now says that 80% of degenerative diseases, which are like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, are preventable with a healthy lifestyle. So we know it is lifestyle. So ageless living is really the first thing. It's about you have to believe that you can stay healthy, right? That's the first step. Because our beliefs, cre our beliefs create our reality, right? So first you've got to believe that you can stay healthy and energetic all your life. And the second thing is, is to forget about your age and don't live your life by your age. So many people are caught up in living life by your age. Who cares what your age is, right? And, uh, and the second thing, and the third thing is, uh, it's, it's realizing that as we age, we, we gain a lot of wisdom, and we, we need to stay around here and have energy and give it back, right? Give it back to society. I don't think we have enough older role models these days, right? Okay. And it's also about taking responsibility for your own health. A lot of, as many people have talked about today, 
See, the problem is, in America, we don't have a health care system, really. They call it that. We have a disease care system. When you're sick, then they try and take care of you. Not very effectively, I would say. Well, sometimes they do. Okay. So, so the age of living lifestyle is really about developing your own health care system. Okay? All right. So our motto around uh, ageless living is we have to age, but you don't have to get old in the process. So that's why I'm known as America's anti-growing old trainer, because I actually teach anti-growing old strategies. Okay? And uh, so, because I, I think there's a big difference between aging and being old. So you can't stop aging. Aging is a natural process, right? And it, actually, aging is good. If you look up the definition of aging, aging means to be, to become fully mature, to reach your full potential, like fine aged wine. So that's good. That's what we're here for, to age. But old, old's another story, man. The definition of old means to be worn out, used up, unexcited about your life, unable to care for yourself. Nobody wants to be old, right? Nobody wants to be old. And, and guess what? Old is just a state of your mind and a state of your body. And those are both choices. Those are lifestyle choices. You can change those lifestyle choices. How about this? What do we commonly ask someone when we want to know their age? Come on, you know. How old are you, we say. So now you know when you ask somebody, how old are you, you're saying, how, how worn up, beat up, unexcited about your life are you? <laughs> That's not cool, is it? That's not cool. So I, I, I teach people, if you do want to know somebody's age, really, who cares? What's your age, OK? Don't ask them how old you are, OK? OK, good. Now, I want to tell you what the basic strategy of ageless living is. But before I do that, I almost forgot. I want to make sure I, re I remind, I say this, is that uh, my contribution for Paul's master package is I have this 12-week uh, online, uh, fully automated, ageless living lifestyle workshop. And each week, you're going to get, you get an audio from me, you get a, a PDF, and you'll get some videos as well. And I tell you exactly what I want you to do for that week. And there's, there's 12 different lessons. And my book is basically broken down into 12 chapters of the basic components of creating real wellness in your life. So I'm going to take you by hand and show you exactly what I want you to do each week so you don't get overwhelmed. And at the end of those 12 weeks, you'll have you develop your own personalized ageless living lifestyle program. That sound good? And then I'll also give you a 30-minute phone consultation to answer any of your questions. So that's included in Paul's master package. So I'm going to let you know about that. OK. You know, I really think I can best, well, let me tell you what the basic strategy. The basic strategy of ageless living is real simple. It's really showing you how to master the things that we're already doing every day just to stay alive. That's breathing, that's drinking water, that's eating food, that's eliminating waste, that's sleeping, that's moving, and that's using our mind. Right? We're all doing that all the time, right? The unfortunate thing is some of us are not doing them as well as we could, right? So age of living lifestyle is just how to master all those basic things. Does that make sense? It's pretty simple stuff. So I think it really stuff we should have learned in grade school, really, how to really take care of our physical bodies. OK, so I think how I can best serve you, I've got about 13 minutes left here, is to just give you some of my best anti-growing old ti tips, OK? Would that be good? Would you like to hear some anti-growing old tips? Yes. yes. OK, good. Here's a real funny one. I think this is funny, and it's kind of interesting. Has anybody heard about the blue zones? Anybody heard about that? Blue zones are some areas in the, around the world where they determine we have the highest population of centenarians, people who have lived to be 100 and stayed fairly healthy. Okay? And guess where one of them is? Right here in Orange County in Yorba Linda. Now, I think the reason for that is, it's, I think it's a small community, and, and it, there's one church there. I think it's, I always forget what it is. It's something like the Church of Religious Science, something like that. But they're really, they're really into health, you know. No coffee, no alcohol, no drugs. They eat really healthy, so they're, they're really healthy. And one time I saw, I saw the, the lead minister. He's in his 90s, real energetic guy. And they were interviewing him. And, and so they asked him, you know, what's a real good tip, an anti-growing old tip? You know what he said? This cracks me up because this is what I say. He says, don't hang around with old people. <laughs> and, and I thought that's so cool. And remember now, old people doesn't, old doesn't mean what your chronological age is. Old means the state of your mind and your body and how you act, right? So don't, hang, don't hold, hold around with old people. OK, another thing about centenarians was they did a study a while back of centenarians who, who again, lived at least to be 100 and were fairly healthy. 
And they, and they ask him, why do you think that you live to be 100 and you're still pretty healthy? And, and one of the answers was a thread through almost everybody's, everybody's uh, answer. What do you think that was? Anybody have an idea? Yes, they were stressed out. They enjoyed their life. They were happy, you know. I mean, you, you ask anybody to, today, we, we kind of got into this thing. We kind of just bought into it that, oh, it's so stressful. You know, everybody's under stress. We have too much stress. Everybody's in this fast-paced, rushed society. But remember, stress is just a perception, right? It's something you just really just kind of make up in your mind. Stress, I mean, it's just, it really, it's just a, a perception of things, what's going on. And most things that we worry about don't even happen. You know what always reminds me of? My favorite book title, I don't know why I wish I'd have thought of this, is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff. Isn't that right? It's all small stuff, you know. Don't worry, be happy, right? Okay. Uh, and, oh, yeah, and happy and have fun. Raise your hand if you're having a lot of fun in your life. Well, good, just about everybody. But, you know, when I ask this, this question to a group, there's some people who don't raise their hand, so I don't put anybody on the spot, but I like to ask them, well, why not, you know? And when you ask a person why they're not having a lot of fun in their life, and usually you get like a blank stare. They don't even know. They've got, you know, they don't even know. And, and again, people have got so, yeah, people have gotten so stressed out and so busy that, that, yeah, they don't even know what fun is anymore, you know? So I just want to say that if, you, if you're not having a lot of fun, you better slow down and ask yourself, why not? Life's not supposed to be a struggle. It's supposed to be fun, right? And ha when you're having fun, it's real energetic, and it's really anti-growing old. That makes sense? OK, fine. Oh, yeah, this, OK, I got I to show you this one. This is about your beliefs and what you think in your mind again. Because as you know, that's the law of attraction, right? What, what intentions you're having, what thoughts you're having, that's what you're going to attract. And also, a good anti-growing old technique is to use visualization. So I, I, I will suggest to you that use a, visualize how you want to be when you're, say, 100 years old. Think about, visualize yourself being just as good and as energetic and as healthy as you are right now. Can you do that? You can do that. And let me show you, I'm gonna show you a demonstration the power of visualization, okay? Everybody stand up again. This is pretty cool. Now you, you need to spread out this a little bit because we gotta open our arms up like this, okay? Everybody got room for that? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, is think about a nice straight line in your spine and just, we're gonna turn, let's everybody turn to our right and, but keep a nice straight spine and just turn as far as you can around and just go around as far as you can. And then just note how far you went, okay? Note how far, where you're at. Okay, now come back to the center. Okay, put your arms down. Now close your eyes. And, and now visualize turning again the same way but going further, much further this time. Don't, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Wait. You've got to visualize it first, okay? You've got to visualize it. So visualize yourself, close your eyes, and see yourself turning a lot farther than you did the first time, okay? You all got it? Open your eyes, arms up. Let's go for it again. Turn to the right. Wow, can you guys see that? You feel that? Yeah. Did you go a lot farther? Yeah. Uh, you went a lot farther. That's the power of visualization. You've got to use that. It really helps you. Okay, great. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> I remember funny one. Let's talk about. Uh, we talked a lot about, already about oxygen and, and, and water. Let's talk about food just a minute. You know, food's a big challenge, right, for most everybody. But you know what? The major food industries in America. They, they're not producing real food anymore. They're they're producing food-like substances. That's what, they, that's what they're doing, right? And you know what? They have this thing called the optimizer. They figured out the optimal amount of salt, sugar, and processed fats that get you addicted to their food. They have people addicted to their processed junk food. They're a major contributor to obesity in this country. They got people addicted to that. But there's an easy solution for that, right? Stop eating that stuff. Stop eating, just like Allison was talking about. You know, read the label, get the junk food, processed food, overcooked food out of your diet. It's real simple to do that, right? You gotta eat real food. Real food is just organic fruits and, and vegetables and nuts and seeds and whole grains. And if you wanna eat some animal products, make sure they're healthy animal products that are raised naturally without any hormones or chemicals, you know? That's real food. Again, my very first book, and actually my most popular book still, Real Food Real Fast, it tells about what is real food, 
where to get it, how to take care of it, and, and how to actually make healthy fast food, how to make healthy meals in 15 minutes or less. So that's real simple, just eat real food. Okay, oh, here's another good one, okay, posture. Posture is, again, it's like Allison was talking about too, posture is so important, not only just aesthetically so you look better, but so you can breathe, you know, when you're like this, you can't breathe very well, it cuts off your thing, so let me show you a couple of real good things for posture. First of all, what works for me is that everywhere I go, I look at people and a lot of people don't have very good posture, right? So right away it reminds me, oh, so anytime, all throughout your day, just all you have to do is lift up your shoulders, pull them back, squeeze your shoulder blades, just pull them down, right? Because we live in a forward world, right? We're always like this, gravity's pulling us forward, gravity's pulling us down, right? So just think about that. When you think about it, lift up, pull your shoulders back. And here's another really cool one. I learned this from a ballet instructor. You know, most of the time our heads are a little bit forward, a little bit bent forward, right? So she said, just take your finger to your nose and go like that, and that's where your head should be. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Just, okay. Okay, uh, let's see. What's some other one good, good strategy I can tell you about here? Some good anti growing old strategies. Uh, well, let's talk about movement just a little bit. Again, I think about this. All the, what are all the uh, young of all species always doing? They're moving, right? They're jumping, running, having a good time. And one of my favorite sayings is, is that do we, do we grow old because we stop playing or do we stop playing because we grow old? I think you figure that out. Yeah. We, stop, we grow old because we stop playing. So, you, so remember, our physical bodies are to move our brain around places, right? So you've got to just move every day. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to run marathons, all this, but you've got to move your body on a regular basis. It's really pretty simple. You know, I'm not going to get, also, I talked a lot about exercise and stuff, but you just got to go out and move. You don't have to beat yourself up. You've got to move on a, on a really regular basis, okay? Uh, let's see, what other great tip do I have for you? We've still got a few more minutes. That's good. Uh, okay, let's do, let's do another exercise for energy. I, I know you guys will like this one. Stand up again. This is called heaven and earth. So first, let's do a little, center, a little centering exercise, a real simple thing to do. We always do this in martial arts first. You just close your eyes and visualize a nice straight plumb line right down through the center of your body, right down through your spine. And our energies tend to get scattered, right? So just, just again, use the power of your mind, close your eyes, and just bring all the energy into your center line. Bring it in, just bring it into the center line. Keep thinking about it. This is actually a Qigong exercise. You're bringing energy from the outside and pushing it all into the, along the center line of your body. Can you kind of feel that? It's really strengthening. If you, if you just try it a few times, you'll get the feel of it. You can actually bring all your energy into your center line. Okay, now we're going to do a thing called heaven and earth. And again, what this, is, this helps to, again, Allison talked about this, about balancing your left and right hemispheres. Again, just balancing your energy in your body. So what we're going to do is we're going to, okay, you shift your weight to your right leg. I'll shift mine to my left. So shift your weight over to, to, to your right leg, and we're going to reach up and, and lift up this way. And the other hand, you're going to push down. So you're going to be pulling energy from the heavens, and you're going to be receiving the energy from the earth, okay? So you take a nice big breath in. Push your foot down into the ground as well. So you're pulling the energy from the heavens, and you're receiving energy from the earth. Big breath in, and bring it back down. Shift the weight to the other leg. Lift it up, inhale. Let the energy flow from the heavens. Let it come up from the earth. Breathe in. Exhale. One more. Last one. Bring it up. Back to center. How's that feel? Feels good? Do about 10 of those. Okay. Sit back down. I think another thing that might be helpful for you guys, I just thought of is, you know, being a personal trainer for, for so long, you always wonder, why do people have such a difficult time sticking with a healthy eating program or an exercise program? Anybody have any ideas on that? Why do they have such a hard time with that? See, see us, I mean, Allison knows that too. I mean, it's just like the natural thing to do. You feel so good. Why do people struggle with that? We don't get it, you know? Anybody have an idea? No ideas, huh? Okay. The answer is not yes, there is it. No. Okay. Well, what I finally came up with was, 
I think it's, I think there's a kind of a disconnect. A lot of people have a disconnect from their physical life and their spiritual life. And when you realize that they're, they're, there's no disconnect, they're one and the same, and that, that if, you, if you believe that we're all spiritual beings with a physical body here on earth just for a short period of time, for a purpose, and our physical body is our gift. It's our vehicle to do whatever you need to do and live your purpose, right? So when you really get clear on that, then you'll realize that, hey, I better take the best care of my physical body I can because I, I want to... I want to live my purpose. I want to be successful. I want to be happy. So my physical body is the vehicle for doing that. So then I think that if you can become really clear on that, and actually like I say, it's kind of your spiritual duty to take care of your physical body. So when you kind of get that in your mind, I think that'll help you to stay, to stick with the program. Does that make sense? Does that help you? Okay, good. We're down to about 50 seconds. Uh, anybody have any real burning question that I can maybe I could help you with? Any, any questions? I'm kind of amazed. I, I have a tendency to talk real fast, right? Because I think I've got to get so much information. I've got to hurry up. I don't have that much time. But I went through it pretty fast, I guess. Was that okay? Went too fast? All right. Okay, good. Well I, well, I guess that's it. So I want you to, one thing, I'll leave you with one thing is always remember be bold, never be old. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>